I'm Keisha Cassiano and I'm an elementary art teacher here in Fort Worth, Texas and welcome to the Art of Education University Run the Art Room where we are going to equip you with tips and tricks to add to your classroom management toolkit. In today's episode we are going to be discussing student names, bathroom passes, and emergency drills. Be sure to click the link below in the description box for more curated resources to help you be successful in running your art room. Make sure you also like and subscribe to the Art of Education University for more videos just like this. Let's get started. We're gonna be talking about what to do this fall if your kindergartners and first graders can't write their names. Has this ever happened to you? Cause it's happened to me before. That first week of school, I'll pass out papers for a first drawing project. I love to see what they can do. And then there's a roadblock. Cause you hand out the pencils and there's always just a handful in class that can't write their name yet. Or it's not very legible. So later when you're reviewing all the art, you're like, who does this really belong to? My tip or trick to get those names on the paper is to use packing labels. This is a little bit more expensive, but if you can get a nice bulk box of Avery labels and spend a few minutes typing out your students' names. You can print out the sheet of labels and then as class is going on, you can go ahead and circulate, peel that sticker and put it on the paper. Another added benefit to this is that if you are holding a list of labels at the end of class and there's still a couple names on it, you know who's absent and didn't start the project. Really easy peasy. Okay, let's talk student names because as Art teachers, we have the whole campus and that's a lot of names to memorize. And as a personal goal of mine, I always try to memorize their names fairly early in the year to help build that student relationship. And the easiest way that I do that is with this binder right here. When you open it up, I have it divided up by each day. And then within each of those days, I have my grade levels in there in the order that I have them. So it will be fifth grade roster with the seating chart associated. Previous years, I will just write on it and it marks up my paper. I'm constantly rewriting or racing, rewriting, racing, and then at the end of the year, I can't even like read the paper. So this year I'm gonna be using sticky notes. So each name is going to be on a sticky note and in case we need to move students around or switch groups or we get new students, I can readjust this pretty easily. Another way of doing this too to help memorize student names is utilizing student photos. And I know that in your teacher access portal, there's pictures associated to each student. You can print those off and have that too with their names associated to help you memorize. A little game that I like to play too is called Musical Names. So once I get my seating chart all set up, I will go around, most of the time they're working on a little like first day arts and crafts and I will go, okay, what's your name again? What's your name, what's your name? And then the fun part is that I go outside and I give the class about 10, 15 seconds to literally run around the room and find a new seat. Then I come in and I have to memorize all their names and if I mess up, we do it again. I go back outside, they move around and it is a challenge, but boy, does it help you memorize their names a lot quicker. So it's fun. It's also a good first week activity to do with your kids as well. Right by the door, I have my art passes as well as the sign that says, if someone is out at the bathroom, they flip it open so that it says wait. And then when they come back, they flip it so that it's open and I know who is gone. Okay, so emergency kits. I have a very simple system just so it keeps me nice, neatly and organized. And in case a sub was to walk in, they will be able to understand if there was any medical needs or assistance for that particular student. Our nurse is really good about providing all of our information, paperwork that we need for each of our students. And I have a binder and this binder is usually organized by grade level. And this is stored in my closet right behind me. And then she will give us anything that we will need from Band-Aid, uh, juice packs if a student was diabetic or whatever we will need. And then what I do is I take all that information and then I go to my binder with my seating chart and class rosters and I will go and highlight all those students on the class roster and write a little note. So when I flip to that class, I'm alert that, okay, I have a student in here that might need X, Y, and Z just in case something was to happen. And then I have all that information nice and organized here. So then when my subs also come in, they also have that information too, instead of having to dig through the official school paperwork and not knowing what all that information 
means or anything like that. So this is mostly for me and it's tucked away. And then to simplify and to keep me aware of what's going on, I have it displayed in my seating chart class roster binder. I really think that a bathroom tour should be part of your first day in art class. Now, humor me here. A lot of our youngest artists are not used to navigating the building from a new location, not their classroom. So they may really not be able to go from your room to the bathroom and back because they know how to get places from their classroom, but maybe not the art room. It's a new setting. So I like to take everybody up walk them down, show them where the bathroom is, and then walk them back. If anybody has to go, they can go ahead and go while we're down there. Yeah, honestly, it does eat up about a third or a half of my first class, but I don't have accidents and I find it makes things go smoother. That investment of time on the bathroom tour saves time in the long run for my students. Hey, art teacher friends, that's a wrap with student names, bathroom passes, and emergency drills. If you have any additional tips and tricks, we will love to continue the conversation in the comment section below. We are at the end of our Run the Art Room series. We hope you've gained lots of insight on different tips and tricks to add to your classroom management toolkit. If you're looking for more videos just like this and other resources, make sure you like and subscribe to the Art of Education University. Well friends, until next time.